What's it like on the inside of a prison? Well, joining me now is Raymond Mola, whose life story was troubled, but then a miracle happened. And Raymond, welcome. Uh, good to see you. Um, you are 35 years old, and you're at a pr pretty good place right now. But the early part of your journey was a, a different story. How did you end up behind bars? What landed me in prison was actually an aggravated assault that uh, I stabbed someone um, back in 2014, and I was sentenced to two, two years in a federal prison. And what was prison like? Take us into that portion of your life. Yeah. Prison was, uh, was a lonely place, uh, uh, very, a place for a lot of anxiety. Uh, you're constantly worried about your safety and, and there's a lot of questions about the process and you know, how you're going to move around inside there and, and what types of things uh, might happen. So definitely a, a tense place to be. When you leave that kind of surroundings, and now you turn to reintegration into society, what was that process like? And, and what kind of mental checks did you have to kind of go through? It's one of the times where I, I kind of understood and, and was very thankful for the work of the church because I, I actually had a pretty good support around me. Uh, people who would come visit me and um, had a job held waiting for me. So I think that my experience coming back was actually a lot different than a lot of guys um, who've been in serving that kind of time. What kind of stories do you hear from the other guys? Because you say it differs in stories briefly. Give us a sense of that may not be everyone's reality. That's right. Uh, a lot of guys come back and it's the, the, the struggle to find a job is very difficult. Um, you know, having that uh, criminal uh, record, it, it hinders you in many ways, um, if, if you allow it to in, in those ways. Mm -hmm. You told me uh, even before this interview that after you came out of prison, um, you didn't necessarily feel free. Coming, leaving a place of being behind bars didn't suddenly mean freedom. You still had some inner struggles to wrestle with. And that's when a relationship with God came in. Uh, unpack that a little bit for us and how was that significant for you? This is one of the beautiful things about my faith because it actually lent so much meaning and purpose to life. I feel like it was actually um, God knowing that I would end up in prison decided to use this somehow to oh. teach me and reveal to me something about humanity and sin that uh, helped me to understand the gospel a little bit better and the need that we all have for it. Um, being in prison, I think I had expectations that all inmates had, which was that when we get out, we're going to be free, and we're all excited and looking forward to that day. And my journey after coming out, it took about five years to, for it to really uh, instill in me, but I didn't feel any more free than I was when I was in prison. I was still in bondage in many ways to addictions and various things I was struggling to, uh, struggling with. and. Um, so that was kind of what stirred in me to finally seek a different kind of freedom that I ended up finding in Christ. One initial thing about your story is that you find a relationship with Christ and then you get commissioned, you feel, by God to go back to the prisons and minister the gospel in that way. But there's something interesting. You went for families, not just the prisoners. Give us a briefly some insight on that because I think that's really unique. That's right. It's, it's every prisoner's... Uh story chant in jail that I'm never going back to prison. I don't want to see this place and whatnot. And funny enough, oddly enough, God uh, decided to send me back. But one of the things that he placed on my heart because of a lot of the restrictions that I thought um, I would have with having a criminal record, being able to serve as either a volunteer or maybe even a part of a ministry was um, that there would be limitations in, in being able to do that. So um, he laid on my heart to, to that how my sister and my mother you know, were struggling with trying to understand the process while I was going through it and how much confusion that led to and, and uncertainty. And so I decided to go into the uh, prison waiting rooms, mm -hmm. the visiting rooms, and um, just kind of educate families on the process. Um, having that background and knowing when, when I came to that point of telling them that I had been through it gave them a lot of confidence that, okay, this guy knows what he's talking about. He's been here before. Mm -hmm. And it gave them a sense of peace that um, now they, they understood the process a little better. Um, very briefly, because we're almost out of time, you wrote a book. Uh, tell me the name of the title of the book again. Uh, Broken Hearted Joy. And we're going to have more on, on our website about that. Um, very quickly, someone who has a family member and they have someone in their family who's behind bars now, very shortly. Uh, what could you say to them? I just feel like we shy away from suffering and difficulty in life. Um, you know, kind of accustomed to a, a comfortable lifestyle. And it's actually in the pain and in the suffering that we find and turn to God because we see our need. And so these things have, have purpose and God has a timing for everything and he'll use it for his glory. Just continue to trust in that and continue to pray for them. 
Excellent. Uh, Raymond Mola, thank you for your time and carrying on your good work. Really appreciate you, my friend. Thank you, my brother.